Hi everybody, this video is long overdue. I promised to film a separate Patsim video for you guys. Finally, now I'm back with this new Patsim lesson. So what confuses learners the most when it comes to learning to read Hangul is Patsim, particularly because the pronunciation system is rather different from that of English. And also, Patsim reading has many roles, some of which might not make logical sense right away, um, but without pronouncing the words with patsim correctly, your Korean pronunciation will always remain kind of awkward, so it's important to learn correctly. But I promise it wouldn't be too overwhelming. With that said, let's begin our patsim lesson. I assume that you've already taken the basic Hangul lesson, but in case you haven't yet, it'll be very difficult to follow. So in that case, you can study with the Learn How to Read Hangul in 30 minutes video that I linked above, and then come back to this lesson. Now let's really begin. Like I said, Patsim has many roles, so for the first part of this lesson, we'll cover the very basic pronunciation of Patsim and then slowly move up to more difficult ones. So starting off with Kyok Patsim, our first word with Kyok Patsim is this. So when it's Romanized, it would be like this, ya, right? And g. So in English, this would be read yag, but it's not that way in Korean. It's read ya, ya, not yag, but ya. Do you hear the difference? At the very end, you drop only the g sound. So here's how it works. You first try yag, yag, and then this time make it till yag and then stop. Right before you're about to make the subtle g sound at the end, you stop. So it's not yag, but it's ya, ya, ya. And let's take a look at another example. So this is m i mi guk mi guk mi guk. Again, it's not mi gug. Don't make it to g sound, but mi gug. Mi gug and silent. Mi gug. Mi gug. Did you get it? So let's take a look at one last example of kyokpatsim. So this is t, right? E, g. So tek. Tek, right? Not cheg, but tek. Tick. So next we'll move on to Nian Batim. Let's take a look at this word. Okay, so this means Korea and this is hu a mm, right? Han Han Look, we just learned how to pronounce uh, kyok patsim, the word with kyok patsim. And this is han guk. Han guk. It's not han guk, but han guk. Um, this one is easy because in English language as well, you don't extend n sound either. Like, for example, when you're pronouncing, you know, um, this word, it's hen, right? Hen. It's not hen, right? It's hen. And, and that's the same with Nian Batim. So it's Hanguk, not Hanguk. Hanguk. And let's look at more example. Probably like three more. And this one. Okay. So this one is. Oh, sorry. S. A. N. Right? San. San, san, and this one is p, e, n, pen, pen, and this means pen, pen, and this is h, e, n, hen, hen, d, hen, d, p, u, n. Handphone, 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 and this one means cell phone. 
handphone. Moving on to too good button, and from too good, it gets a little bit trickier. So let's take a look at this word. So this is g, o, d, right? In English, this is God, right? But in Korean, this word is kut, kut. It's not kud. But like I said, you need to drop the d sound at the end. So it's not like go, but it's more like kut, kut. You stop right before you're about to produce d sound. So it's kut, right? It's not kud, but right before making d sound, you stop kut, kut. I hope you get it by now. And for one more tip, when pronouncing the word with tigut batin, your tongue should be touching. Um, kut, 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 underneath kut. your front teeth. That way, it proves that you're speaking it correctly. So let's do a few more with t g u t b a t i m This one and this one. Okay, so this is a uh, right since e n g doesn't have any sound. This is a uh, t right o t o t o t Not odd, but odd, odd, and this is da, otta, 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 and this means to earn. And this is m, e, d. It's not need, but it's meet, meet. Like I said, you drop the d sound, only the d sound. So meet, 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 meet da. And then moving on to liul batim. So liul is quite simple to pronounce. And let's look at this one. M. U, right? U. M. U. L. Mul. 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 It's not mul. You don't extend it, but you just simply stop right before trying to make l sound. So. Mul, mul, not mul, but mul. Okay, so I'm sure you can read this word because we've already learned how to read niun b a t i n So this one is s, and this one is a, uh, right? Or a, uh, a, uh, right? S, a, uh, n. Um. This is son, son, son. This is. O, e. Oh, sorry. E. <laughs> son, mul, son, mul, son, mul, son, mul, and this means a gift. Okay, let's look at this one. This is d, a, right? And this is e, tal, tal, tal. Another l, but this one's consonant, and this one is p a t i m And this one is y o right? y o This one is g, tal yo, tal yo, tal yo, tal yo. And this means a calendar. I'm pretty sure that you know by now. This is not tal yo, right? It's tal yo, tal yo. Okay. Okay. So let's practice this word. M. Ah, d, mat, mat, right? It's not mud, but it's mat, mat, mat. Again, your tongue should be touching underneath your front teeth, and this one is double consonant. I hope you remember what sound it makes. It's d, d. So you put more pressure than d sound. So this one's d and d, 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 like Spanish word. Te, like como te llamas? Te, te, right? Te. And this one is a, and this one is o. So this is matal, 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 matal. And this means the first daughter. This is a good word to practice both t i g u t b a t i m and liul b a t i m with. And next one is m i u m b a t i m Oh, right? 
And this one is um, 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 ma, um, ma. So it's not um, ma, um, ma, um, ma. And your lips should be pressing each other when um, you're pronouncing um, the word with um, ni and batim. Um, so it's um, ma, um, ma, um, ma. But you don't extend it to um, um, ma, right? Okay. Okay, let's take a look at this one. D, e, um, tim, tim, tim. So this this one literally means jam, like strawberry jam. So in English, it's pronounced jam, right? Jam. You guys extend m sound, but we don't do that. We just end with tim, tim. It's quite um clean i would say tim tim this is jam do you see the difference and one more example would be this one okay so this is n e m nem right nem Nemse, nemse, and it means smell. The next one, kiepatim. My peep looks kind of weird, but excuse my handwriting. I'm I'm literally trying to write between this camera and this note that I'm holding. But um, I hope you understand. And anyways, this one is e, right? E, b, e, e. Likewise, you don't extend it to eb, eb. It's you stop right before making b sound. So it's eb, eb. When you're pronouncing it, your lips should be pressing each other at the end. Eep. So it's eb, eb, eep. but not too tightly, Eep. just softly touching each other. And the next example of pip batim would be so this one is pip right b a b not bob but pop 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 your lips touching each other gently pop 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 Okay, and next one is shield batim. Let's start off with this word. So no sound. Oh, oh, right. Oh, and this is s, right? So you might think, oh, then this should be us, us. Oh, oh, that's not right, is it? Um, so this one's a bit tricky to explain, but this one is pronounced ut, ut, just like tiket batim. Oh, sorry, just like this. Ut, you remember this is not ut, but ut, right? And this is the same. It's ut, and this is ut. Um, I don't know how to logically explain this, but let me give you a few more examples. So, do you remember this word when we were covering tigut patim? You already tried reading it, so it's good. It's not good, good, good. Right, and this means soon, and this one is a different word. This one, oh, sorry, this one is a different word, but they pronounce they're pronounced exactly the same. So, kot and kot, kot, it's not kos, but it's kot. Okay, and this means a place, and this means soon. So there are two different words, but they pronounce exactly the same. So let me give you another example. So 
So this is one of my favorite words. It means sunlight. And this is h, right? And e, he. And this is siut. So it has s sound, but when it becomes patim, it doesn't get. Pr it's not pronounced s. It's pronounced het, het, just like if it was tigut patim, het. Head. So the closest romanization of the sound of this word would be hat, but without t sound at the end. So it's head, head. And this one is same as well. So this is bu, i, and this is t, right? So you might think that it's pronounced bitch, bitch, but thankfully it's not pronounced that way. Um, it's the same with chiut patim. So this is head bit. Head bit. So the more correct romanization would be bit but without t sound. Bit. Head bit. Head bit. That's how it's read. Head bit. Head bit. So this one sounds exactly the same with this one. The one with chiut patim. Head bit. Head bit. I hope you got it. If you have any questions regarding my lesson, if you didn't get some parts of it, then please leave it in the comment section down below and I'll try to elaborate more on the missing points. So moving on to the most interesting patim, which is eung patim. Um, so someone in the comment had a really good way of explaining eung pronunciation and here it is. I'm trying to write something to show you guys understand it. Okay, there you go. So we all know that um, yung sound has no sound when it's placed in the in the first consonant place, and it just follows whatever vowel comes next, right? So this one is ah ah, right? It just blends into the vowel sound ah ah. But when it when patin becomes Oh, so sorry. But when yung becomes patim, it produces its own sound. And that sound is ng sound. Ng, right? So this one has no sound, right? And this one has ng sound. So you can think of yung as nothing. Did you get it? Na thing. So when it's placed in the front part, then it becomes no sound, and when it's placed at the very end, it becomes ng sound. So I thought it was a really good tip or analogy, I would say, to the English language. So I appreciate that very much. Um, but anyway, since we know that ing batsim has ng sound, let's practice more reading the words with eung patim. So this one is uh, one of my favorite words too. G, o, right? Ko, yang, ko yang, i, right? Ko yang i, ko yang i, and it means a cat. Is This one is a good word to practice yung batsim since both letters have yung batsim. Um, so this is s, o, right? Ng, song, song, song. G, o, ng, songgung, songgung, songgung. And this word means success. Songgung. And let's practice one more. Since I like the sound of ng, I know it's weird, but it does sound really good to me. So this is yo, right? Yo, yo, ng, yong, all right, oh, yong, 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 and yong means English. Just FYY. Korean is h 
한국 어 in Korean. This means Korean, the like Korean language in Korean. 한국어. So 한국. Do you remember 한국 was Korea, and 어 means language. So Korea language. So this means Korean. Okay, moving on to 지읒 받침 and 지읒 받침. You can think of 지읒 받침 and 지읒 받침 as sisters because they look similar, right? And they also sound almost the same. I'm saying almost because there's a reason, um, but I'm going to explain that um, after we're done with this basic bit. Anyways, um, this is n, a, z. But do you remember that we covered 지읒 받침 already when we're doing 시읒 받침? So this one. This one wasn't bitch, right? This was this was pit pit. And this is the same. 네 아 not not. Okay? So this is not not. This is not and this one is the same. So it's not pronounced naz, naz, but it's pronounced not, not. So it's same with siut patim or tigut patim. So not, not, not. So when you're pronouncing these words, your tongue should be placed underneath your front teeth. Not, 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 right? Not. I'll give you a few more examples. So this one is let's practice reading this together. Z O and this one is more like t sound, right? So chot chot but not chot, right? Chot chot chotta 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 and this one sounds the same with 쳤다. So 쳤다 and 쳤다 has the same sound, although they have different meaning. And this one as well, so we can easily read the first letter. It's 민, and this is 나. This feels like it should be 쯔, but this is actually more like 쯔. So 민 not, 민 not, but without 쯔 sound, right? 민 not, 민 not. Minna. So it sounds the same with minna. Although this word does not exist, we can still pronounce it. So they um, sound exactly the same. Minna, minna. Again, if you feel like you didn't get something fully or clearly, please let me know in the comment section so I can elaborate more on that for you. So moving on to kyokpatim. So the reason why I placed these two words together is just like 지읒 and 지읒, 기억받침 and 기억받침 are also like sisters. They sound almost the same. And the reason why I'm saying almost is because generally these two, when they are 받침, have the exact same sound, like 억 and 억. It's not 억, but it's 억, 억, just like this one and this one sounded the same. Not and not. Not, not, of, of, right? So these two are sisters. But there are some cases where they produce different sound. And that depends on which consonant comes right next. So for example, let's take a look at these two examples. So these two sound the same when it's on their own. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh and ok, right? But in this case, when all these three letters are read in a row, this becomes ki ogi. Ki ogi. So these two produce ogi sound. Although it's grammatically correct to write this way, it's pronounced this way. And this one as well, pu ogi. Pu Oh, sorry. What's this? Pu <laughs> or ki. So this one, these two are on its own ok sound, both ok sound. But when there is another consonant that comes right after it, 
it changes its sound. This one is augy and this one is aki. And this is called consonant assimilation. And there's so much more to learn about this and we'll cover that after we're done with the basic pronunciation, which we're doing right now. So this was just a glimpse of consonant assimilation and we'll get back to it soon when we're doing hirtbatin. But first let's practice more of kirkbatin. So this is pu, right? Pu ok. Pu ok. Pu ok. Not pu ok, but pu ok. And this means a kitchen. And a little bit difficult word, I would say. Okay, so this one is he. He, zu, e, er, he, chil, he, chil, n, yo, k, he, chil, nyo, he, chil, nyo, he, chil, nyo. And this means, um, this does not exactly mean sunset, but this means by the time around the sunset. So, it's a beautiful word. And let's move on to tigut batim. So, as you've guessed it, tigut batim and tigut batim are also sisters. So, let's try reading. I'm pretty sure some of you might know how to read this by now if you apply the same rule. So this is p, a, and this is t, right? Pat, not pat, but pat, pat. And this also, ko, got, not got, kot, kot. So pat, kot, m, i, mi, mi, mi. Pat, kot, mi. And they sound exactly the same with pat, kot, mi, and pat, kot, mi, right? And pat, kot, mi as well. So these four sound the same, these four sound the same, and these four sound the same. On its own, they sound the same. Of course, when there is, you know, another word, another letter that comes after it, um, the sound may change, but that's what we're going to learn when we are covering consonant assimilation um, in, in more depth. So, so next one is pipatim, and pipatim is easy to read because it sounds exactly the same with pipatim. So this one is e and p, right? E, just like e with pipatim. So it's not e or e, both are e, e, with your lips gently pressing each other at the end, and same with. This one, chip and chip. Let's do two more. Yup, right? Yup and yup. And last one. Oop. My handwriting is horrible. Um, but I hope you can easily identify it. So this is up. Right? And up. Easy, right? And let's move on to our final patim. So I guess this is the good place to start explaining consonant assimilation. This is one part of consonant assimilation. So please um, pay extra attention if you want to understand everything that I'm, I'm trying to explain. 
Um, so we all know that he has he sound when it's a consonant, but when it becomes patim, the final consonant, it does not have the sound of its own. So what happens is it's always determined by which consonant comes after it. So what I mean by that is, let's take a look at this word. So this word also has hit patim here, but like I said, when it becomes patim, it doesn't have a sound of its own, and the sound of hit patim is determined by which consonant comes next. So this one, hit patim, if this one is followed by ing, consonant, he sound gets removed. So it just becomes like this. Chuayo. So chuayo is pronounced chuayo. Chuayo, this is a grammatically correct way of writing it, but this is pronounced chuayo. Chuayo. And let's look at another example. So this one. So when you look at this one, this one has hit button followed by nian consonant. In this case, when hit button is followed by consonant nian, hit is replaced by nian sound. And it does not remove the the next consonant sound. So nian sound is preserved here, and only hu change to changes into nian sound. So this becomes chunne. 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 It sounds the same, but this one is a grammatically correct way of writing it, and it's pronounced like this. Chunne. One. In this case, hit patim is followed by kyuk patim, right? And in this case, hit and kyuk combines produces k sound. So this one becomes chu ke. The sound, the pronunciation of this word becomes chu ke. Chu ke. Chu ke. And this one, hit patim followed by tigut consonant becomes t sound. So this is pronounced chu ta, chu ta. So this is chu. Hit patim with tiut consonant. This one produces t sound. So this one becomes chu chi. Chu chi. Right? This is not chu chu ji. This is chu chi because the consonants are assimilated and produce t sound. So to review what we just learned about hit patim consonant assimilation. This one hit, so hit doesn't have a sound of its own when it becomes patin. So it's always determined by which consonant comes next. And that's when the consonant assimilation happens. And so what happens here is hit patin combined with kyo consonant becomes k, right? So the consonant assimilation happened and produced k sound. So it becomes chukke. And this one as well, when hit patim and nian consonant is combined, it's preserved. This one is preserved and only he patim change he patim changes to n sound. So it becomes chunne. Chukke chunne. And this one, hit patim followed by the consonant produces to sound when consonant assimilation happens so it becomes to ta
좋다. And this one here, 받침 followed by ian consonant, it becomes um, the hit gets deleted. So there's no h sound. It's not j o h a but just c h u a c h u a And this one, last one, here, 받침 followed by t i t is t sound. So it becomes. 좋지, 좋지. Some of you might be wondering that how about h i p a t i m followed by other consonants other than these five? Um, and that's a really good question. Um, but no need to worry about those because there are mm, very few or probably no word that goes like, this. for example, So this one we can pronounce it, but this word doesn't exist. So there is no word that has h i p a t i m followed by l i l consonant. So you don't need to worry about pronouncing this sound because this kind of words don't exist. You can only be concerned about you can only be concerned about practicing these five examples of h i p a t i m consonant assimilation. Again, if you don't understand, please leave it in the comment section down below. So the seven most common words that have hit b a t i m are. Okay, so this is not a grammar lesson, so I won't explain what kinds of verb conjugations there are. Um, but the word ta. In all of these words, can be replaced with many other conjugations, like like these. And to pronounce them all correctly, you would need to know the h i t b a t i m consonant assimilation rule that I just taught you, right? So this one is k sound, right? This one n n sound, right? So n n n e and this one produces t sound, so c h o t a and this one the h sound gets deleted, so s a a, and this one becomes t sound, so it becomes k u r o c i m a n k u r o c i m a n Okay, guys. So that's it for today's lesson, and we'll continue to learn more about consonant assimilation from k y u k p a t i m to t i g u t p a t i m And I excluded h i u p a t i m because we already covered everything we need to know about h i u p a t i m s um, consonant assimilation. And if you'd like to get a glimpse of how the consonant assimilation rules work in other consonants, um, let's take a look at just one word to kind of get you. The feel of it, it's pretty similar with h i t b a t i m except that there's a different rule. So, can you try reading this word? Chances are you might be reading this like like this, k u k m u k u k m u right? Um, and that's not entirely wrong. Even if you say it like that, most Koreans will understand what you're trying to say. But that sounds a bit. I guess uh, awkward because it's not a standard natural pronunciation of this word. So the correct way, the standard way, the most natural way to pronounce this word is actually k u m u l rather than k u m u l k u m u l Do you see the difference? Do you hear the difference? So this one sounds more effortless and more natural. And the reason why it happens is because k i p a t i n and m i m consonant gets assimilated, so it produces ng sound here, and this m sound remains. So following that rule, it's k u m u l And I know that the term consonant assimilation sounds a bit 
you know, it's it sounds like it's a big deal. Like it sounds like a big term, but it's actually not. It's a rule that helps you to pronounce words with less effort. You know what I mean? So it spares your mouth um, the needless effort and pressure so that you can pronounce it in a more comfortable, natural, and I guess easier way. That's what consonant assimilation is for. So with that in mind, I hope you don't feel overwhelmed or too burdened by this, thinking that reading Korean is hard because once you get used to it, it will just come natural to you. I promise you that. I hope you found my lesson helpful. And if you have any questions, please comment it down below. I'll try my best to give you a more detailed explanation if I can. And I'll see you again in part two. Bye-bye.